Hi, Russ Stooley, world leader, best point fighting, national boxing coach, Cambodia. Tons of dang great, but that's not why you're here. You're here to have a jolly good wheeze down at the gym and find out how you can use that sword and shield against a live opponent, not just on the back. Let's have a look. Right, let's have a look at this sword and shield. Can you get like a cover up, please, bro, like you've been somebody smashing into you? Okay. When they cover up like that, right, let's assume that he's covered up really well and he's struggling to get in anywhere because he's got great defense. You can use this sword and shield to cover his arms so that you know he can't hit you back because you can feel what's going on. You've got his arms here. Now, if you push too much, it just becomes a, a wrestling fight. You don't want that. You want just enough pressure on him that he can feel it but you can feel what he's doing. So if he goes to move one of his arms, you can feel it and you can control it. So I'll show you from this side. So if you're, so you cover him here. Right? Now that immediately semi, semi traps his arms. So you've now got your targets. Okay. So once it's there, you've got targets. Now what you do with your elbow is quite key here. If I push my elbow down, you can see it starts to lift up the elbow on that side on Theodore. So again, if you be strong there, bro. I'm here. If I push my elbow down, this starts to lift, so I get a gap. If I lift my elbow, I start to get a gap down the middle and a gap this side, which obviously I'm not going to hit this side like that, but I get a bit more gap down the middle. So when he covers up, if I'm struggling to get in on him because he's got such great defense, I can cover him here and you can see immediately I start to get my gap. So I've got my shovel hook. Additional to that, this one can cup around this, this arm, this glove here. So I can pull and open up for my shots to the head. So this arm on here is critical that you get this right and learn this and drill it. Because you can pull down and strike. You can move elbows out of the way and strike the, the body. You get your shovel hooks in and your uppercuts. Okay, so that's one on that. The next bit was um, against the head. So if you're in a, just swap legs one second please, Tudor. So we'll use the forearm to control the head. Let's say you've thrown out, a, if you've got a lazy arm, I've thrown out a jab, he's slipped it, moved off, and he starts to come towards me. So every time, I jab, he slips and moves towards me, and he moves in on me, don't like that. And again, he does it to me, bang, he moves in on me, don't like that. So now, when I jab and he slips, I want to put my forearm on him, which stops him from moving in on me. And I hold him in place, so I'll show you from this side as well. So, just, just for the camera. So I jab, he slips, starts to move in, move towards me. And you can use your forearm then to control him. So you can start to move around and use your angles whilst controlling the head. If he really pushes towards you, push coming towards me strong, you can angle off and start to throw your stuff. So you can use it for control there. It can be used for control when you, again, it, swap legs again, please do them. You're in close with it, you can use it exactly the same way. And then you can clear him and start to do other things. So it works great for things like that. A lot of noise, building noise going on. Sorry about that, it's just the way it is. The other one I spoke to you about on the bag, number three, was around like this. I'll show you from this side. Many times in, in boxing, you get caught where they trap your arm. Oh, yeah, this one, trap my arm. So they hold your arm like this. And you see it all the time, you see people struggling to get out. Well, you can use your sword and shield for this. You can just clamp like this and hold him in if you want to wait for the ref. And then you can hold this side, shoulder down, and hope everything's going to be okay. That keeps you fairly safe. Another thing you can do is if he's holding me strong, right, I push my arm through as far as I can. Limp arm, come out to the front, and now I've got my shield again here. Be strong, don't let me get out. Be really strong. There's nothing he can do to stop me from just flopping my arm down. And now I've got my shield again. 
So you can grab it, grab it as hard as you possibly can. Do not let me get out. Now, if he's on my elbow joint, it's going to be difficult. So that's why you push your arm through and then you're down and round. As simple as that. He'll never stop you. Just can't stop you from doing it. If he uses two hands to grab it, even better. You just smack him with the other one, don't you? Okay. So that's that. The other part of it was that if he's got me here and he's trying to hook me in the body. Hit me in the body. Throw hooks to the body. No, hit, hit, hit. He can hit me, right? Because I'm not controlling this arm in any way. I've got to be palm down, elbow out. Now hit. Hit as hard as you can. Hit the body as hard as you can. Okay? It's as long as I do that. Obviously, you're not going to hang around there all day, but it stops them. If I grab normal, hit me. Easy. Palm down, elbow out. Can't hit me. As long as my head is down here, in boxing, he can't hit my head either. So I'm keeping myself as safe as possible until I can think of something to do to get out and do something. Anyway, that's sword and shield stuff. Thank you, Theodore. See you later. Oh, like, subscribe, press a bell or not, complain or not, don't care. See you later. Thank you.